or Pebbles, Ben, and the rest of yun. Annie. Pebbles, Annie. Pebbles? Annie. Okay. Thank you. Ah, kaya hindi pa naman yung buhok mo. Tama kay ni Karen. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Narida po tayo sa ikalabing dalawang yugto ng ating first season on the Catholic family. So, nayan po. So, makikita nyo na ang ating uh, main title pa rin po is uh, The Family as the domestic church in their involvement in the parish and in society. Meron tayong dalawang minuto. I am very much happy to welcome again sina PJ, sina Marisa, si Mini. Oh, Annie, Salvador, I'm happy that you're around. And si Jai Curacha, Hazel, Concepcion Kumpas, and Blanca. Oh, Cecil. Probably with June Colina and MJ. Good evening. Together with Ernie. And of course, there's Ruth and Maria Cristina Santos. Thank you for logging in. Um, meron po tayong uh, guests. Sila po ang magbibigay ng kanilang testimony tungkol sa papaano ang kanilang pamilya ay hindi lang magkakasama, nagkaka, nagmamahalan sa loob ng kanilang sariling pamilya, kundi uh, dahil kasi uh, they felt, alam nila na meron silang responsibilidad much larger than family life but the family involved sa sa ano sa sa lipunan sa society and so pakikinig natin sila mamaya and after which we shall have a nice uh, Q&A kwentuhan at mar marahil maraming tanong at sana nga mabigyan tayo ng vision larger vision about um uh, family life and its relationship with our parish, with the church, and with our society. Simulan po natin ang orasyon ngayong gabi, alas 6, in punto. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, And she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts. Let us read whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was the beginnings, now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Salamat sa pag-host sa atin, yung aking pamangkin, si Jeric Gustilo, and co-hosted by PJ Kumpas. We wish one one this evening na maka, makabahagi na rin natin si Bea Magat that has something to do this evening. So ito na po ang ating 12th week of the 52-week series on being grateful for the Catholic faith and passing it on to the next generation. Walang sound. No sound. Walang sound. PJ, may sound ba? Jerry Grill. Check. Uh, wala pa. Wala pang sound, please. Jerry, view option, share sound. Sisters, 12 week na po tayo. Lampas na po tayo ng dalawang buwan at kalahati. And itong yugto po ito ay very interesting also. Kasi ang ating tema po, no, the Catholic family, in what way it has supposed to have an influence, an impact to its own church, to the Catholic church, to its own parish, and why not to the society? Sa lipunan po. That's what we've been saying in the past two segments. So ngayon, pakinggan po natin muna ang isang text sa scripture na siyang magbibigay po ng kulay liwanag sa ating pag-uusapan ngayon. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, King of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. Let everyone who has survived in whatever place he may have dwelt, 
be assisted by the people of that place with silver, gold, goods, and cattle, together with free will offerings for the house of God in Jerusalem. Then the family heads of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and Levites, everyone, that is, whom God has inspired to do so, prepared to go up to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. All their neighbors gave them help in every way, with silver, gold, goods, and cattle, and with many precious gifts besides all their free will offerings. Ganun po, brothers and sisters, meron tayong narinig na libro, Book of Ezra. Ano ba ang konteksto ng napag-usapan dyan ni Ezra? Bakit pinag-uusapan yung bumalik sa Jerusalem? Eh kasi po, nawala sila sa kandang bayan ang mga Israelita. Yes, okay, okay yung somehow the kingdom of David and Solomon, pero nahati po yan into two parts. Yung northern at saka yung southern kingdom. Israel they call the north, Judah they call the south. Somehow, though they come from the same stock, may magkakaiba po ang kanilang mga political affiliations. The north were more towards Syria and Lebanon, and the south were more with Egypt. May mga propeta that were telling the kings, masama ang ating pamumuhay. Hindi tayo nasasangayon sa kalooban ng Diyos. Hindi ito ang tamang pamumuhay bilang bayan ng Diyos. Unheeded, pinagtatawanan, even persecute them. One of these prophets, Jeremiah, predicted, Naku, we will have an exile. Mapapagla tayo sa exile. In fact, nangyari sa Northern Kingdom. Nakuna sila. Sinakop sila ng mga Assyrians at pinadala ang mga taga-Northern Kingdom sa Assyria, meron pang isang group sa South. Sabi ni Jeremiah, tatamaan din tayo yan. Pinagtatawanan siya. He was even maligned. He became a suffering servant. And yet, nagkatotoo. Meron din siyang pong prediction kasi pumunta siya sa exile na ito'y magtatapos after 70 years. Yun po ang nabasa natin. After 70 years. Ano po ang 70 years? Kunyari ako po, 60 anyos. Napunta ako sa Babylon, present-day Iraq. Dala ko aking mag-anak, aking anak, ang aking apo. O sige, marahil yung aking anak, nasa 35, 40 years old. Nag-aasawa sila doon, bata sila, mga 20 anos pa lang, may anak na. So ano nangyari dito? Ba yung aking, may apo na ako. Siguro yung aking apo, mga 10, 15 years old. What is 70 years? Di ibig sabihin, yung apo ko, 85 na. May anak na rin siya na pinanganak sa Babylon. At marahil yung kanyang anak, meron din na tao, anak. So, ilang generasyon po yan. Yan, 70 years na yan. So, ito po, there was a twist of faith sa mga kudyong ito. Aba, merong sumako sa Babylon. And this is the Persian Empire led by a new king called Cyrus. Alam niyo mga kapatid, meron siya parang religious, religious bent. Nagkaroon siya ng panaginip. At sinabi sa kanyang panaginip na yung Diyos ng mga kutsyo, gustong siya ang mga siwa na i-rebuild ang kanilang temple sa Jerusalem. So, pinahanap niya ang mga kudyo. At pinabalik. Bumalik ba? Mga kapatid. Eh kung yung generasyon, kunyari, ng lolo ko, o ng kapatid ko, o ng tatay ko, pumunta ng Amerika, 70 years after, at least yung great-grandchildren ng lolo ko, o tatay ko, nasa Amerika na ngayon, Canada, Germany, France, developed countries. Ba't ka uuwi? Ba't ka magsisimula ulit? Eh, tawagin natin, backwater yan eh. Pobreng bayan yan, yung Israel na yan. Mas maraming desyerto, lalo na sa Judea. 
So, konti lang po ang umuwin. And yet, itong konting ito, ito po ang nagpasimula. And the first thing, kasi yan po ang task, meron naman silang gamit na pinadala ni Cyrus, they wanted to rebuild the temple. Rebuilding the shrine, the place where God lives, together with the Ark of the Covenant. And so they began again, their people, their nation. Ito po ang storya ni Ezra. Storya today. About a thousand years ago, God told Francis of Assisi to rebuild this church. Ito naman si Francis. Akala niya, physical church. Nakita niya isang rundown chapel. Pangalan, San Damiano. Kasi parang doon, nagpakita ang Diyos, nagsalita si Cristo mula sa Cruz. And therefore, Francis of Assisi in his conversion to become a more fervent, devout Catholic, aba, inayos niya simbahan. Hindi pala yun. Mas ma mahirap ang pinaparebuild the church. The church was luxurious. The church was with a lot of people who were no longer living out the simplicity, the goodness, the kindness for each other of Jesus Christ. Sabi niya, revealed the lives of the church people. The churchmen, starting with the bishops and the Pope, rebuild their faith. And that is Assisi. To this day, kung bumisita kayo sa Assisi, it is a holy place, a sacred environment, filled, you could feel in the air, the holiness of Francis of Assisi. Now, about 50 years ago, Pope Paul VI came to Manila and this Holy Father wanted to rebuild the church in Asia, especially because of what happened to the church in China. So, what did he do? He gathered together all the bishops of Asia. He made a federation of bishops' conferences. Pagkatapos, he put up with the help from Germany, Miserior, funding Radio Veritas Asia. And with that, he said, let's proclaim again the good news in different languages, in Burmese, in, in Hindi, in Japanese, in Chinese particularly. And with that, we have so many of these radio programs beaming, putting the airwaves by radio to the different parts of Asia. Manila, the Philippines, became the hub of the evangelization of peoples of Asia. 25 years after 1995, what happened? World Youth Day, in there, it was also to commemorate the Silver Jubilee of the visit of Pope Paul VI by John Paul II this time, and he took as a theme of the World Youth Day telling the young people that were gathered there. I was present, many others still alive are present. He said, as the Father has sent me, so I sent you. And he pushed again that the Filipinos and from the Philippines, the youth gathered from all over the world would become proclaimers of the faith. But more recently, last December, Pope Francis, because he came to know that we are preparing for the 500th anniversary of the reception of the Cebuanos of the faith because they were baptized. They allowed themselves to become Christians. Thanks to Father Ricky and a lay person, an OFW driver po ng mga madre. Nakipagkonchaban sila at umabot sa opisina ni Pope Francis. Why don't you begin the first Mass of the Misa di Gallo for the Filipinos? December 15 was a Sunday in the evening po. 7,000 Filipinos gathered inside St. Peter's Basilica. Around 3,000 
and another 4,000 outside. To begin, this sense of, wow, we're celebrating the birth of our faith in the Philippines in 2021. So December 15, 2019, Pope Francis said something to the Filipinos. Tapos sabi niya, Dibentate, Dibentate, become contrabandisti de la fede. Become smugglers of the Catholic faith. He was talking to migrants, OFWs, in Rome, in Italy. And therefore he was saying, Kayo mga Pilipino, ismuggle you inside the homes of your amo na inyong mga tinutuluyan, na inyong mga tinutulungan, na inyong pinagtatrabahuan, ibalik nyo sa inyong mga amo ang kanilang paniniwala kay Kristo Jesus. So to this day po, it's not just Ezra and Nehemiah. It's not just Francis of Assisi. The new Francis, the Pope, tells us to share the faith. A Catholic family is a missionary family of the faith to their neighborhood as, as will have an impact in the whole society. Please allow me to introduce Thousand Oaks Packaging Corporation. It is a medium-sized private corporation engaged in manufacturing corrugated carton boxes. These are the brown boxes that are common in supermarkets to pack large volume of purchases. Ito yung mga balikbayan boxes. Uh, TOPC is located at the Lourdes Sports Center, Dr. A. Santos Avenue, Barangay San Antonio, Sukat, Paranaque City. Around 90% of TOPC's customers are exporters in the line of automotive, electronics, semicon medical and food businesses and most of them are Japanese companies some are American meron din mga Filipino we have one customer which is owned by Father Francis uncle Orthopedics International let me introduce us before proceeding I Benji and my wife Pebos are the administrators of Thousand Oaks Packaging Corporation I was a former Zwilig Pharma employee before I ventured into several businesses. Some were okay, some did not do well. May mga nalugi. But Pebos, on the other hand, was a banker. She was a branch manager of Security Bank when I asked her to resign and help me with managing the company. We both studied at Don Bosco School of Theology and became students of Father Francis on several subjects. In fact, Father Francis was my advisor in my project paper. This is about Bible and life sharing wherein we all prayed the Lecture Divina weekly in our company. During our studies, we were challenged by our professors who supported us in coming up with formation programs in our workplace. This will be discussed further later on. Our team is composed of Ben Marasigan and Bubut Vidad who are who were rogationists before, Leo Senyal, Mai Cabral, Pong Litana, and Ning Baria. Some people were, are sent to far-flung places to be their mission, to be on mission. But we believe that God has placed us here in TOPC to be our mission field. This is where we have committed ourselves to profess, to live, and to proclaim our faith in Jesus. It all started in 2013 during the CBCP's announcement of the nine-year preparation program for the 500th anniversary of the Gospel's arrival in the Philippines. Nakaalain kami sa project ni Father Francis. Okay. During one of our classes, uh, one of our professors, Father Anthony Nguyen, who is also a Salesian, challenged us and asked us, What will you do for the year of faith? Napatanong nga kami, ano nga ba gagawin natin? We prayed about it. 
I am sure our professors prayed for all their students, including us, and these are what God allowed to happen. Let me enumerate chronologically. For the year of faith, 2013, uh, first of all, let me say that even before 2013, we already celebrate Mass monthly. And for us, this is tops. This is number one. And this year is an affirmation that the Mass must be continued to, to be celebrated regularly. Okay, the first thing that we did for the Year of Faith, in response to the challenge of our professors, is that TOPC reviewed the 12 Articles of Faith, the Apostles' Creed, by conducting 12 simple catechetical talks in layman's terms, reviewing each article for each month during the Year of Faith. Secondly, we started our annual spiritual recollection, and I would like to thank Father Mike LaGuardia for supporting us in this. Uh, we do this to have an awareness and thus be thankful for all the blessings. Okay, we also have to take care of our employees' physical needs, so we started the Thousand Oaks Packaging Care, or TOP Care we call, we call it. It is an in-house medical benefit for employees and their immediate family. And the unused contributions are accumulated and shall be part of their savings until retirement. And they also have life insurance. 2014 is the year of the lady. Here we started the Bible and life sharing. This is a liturgical Bible reading where we read the gospel for the coming Sunday and give a short reflection of it. This is a Lectio Divina. Bible and Life Sharing, or BLS, has nurtured the habit of reading the Bible throughout the whole company. BLS has played an important role in improving relationships within the organization. The leaders get a better understanding of what each employee is going through. It has even become a venue for reconciliation among employees who have some misunderstandings. This is our seventh year now of doing BLS. And during this lockdown, we do it via messenger. It has a very positive impact in our company. And like anything good that is happening, we had to share it with our customers and our suppliers. During one of uh, our meetings, we planned to have a housing assistance program for the employees. A big task. Can this be done? Was our question to ourselves. Let me give a short background. Huh? More often, production employees in a factory setting like the OPC come from the poor sector of society. This reality came when we immersed ourselves by visiting the homes of all our employees. We saw that Almost all of them are financially challenged. Why? In hiring for production work, we are not strict as to educational attainment is concerned as long as they are willing to learn and are really in need of a job. Pero siyempre, there are some criteria, criteria that, we, that must be met. An opportunity is given to those who have a hard time applying for work because they lack education. Some are uneducated, some are undereducated, and a lot of them are unionists. Yes, unionists from their previous job. That is why they are having a hard time looking for another one. The desire is to help them who have lots of challenges. And we also experience challenges uh, with them. Let me enumerate some. They lack financial acumen. They come from poor, poor families. Most of them have not been taught to handle money. And most likely because they lacked it. And a lot of them are deep in debt and have this disordered belief that they cannot live without utang. Some of them have not worked for a while. And some had vices like gambling, alcohol addiction, and, and others. Some were not able to attend values formation. And we cannot just turn our backs on them 
and shrug our shoulders and say, what can we do? That's their problem. They came here to work. But we believe that they need education, training, and formation. Imagine what they will pass on to their children. The importance of education is always re reiterated to them, which they must give effort to and provide for their children. Employees are the most important asset of any company, as they say. They must be given the opportunity to learn. They must be taught about important aspects of life, most especially the spiritual aspect. And as mentioned, values formation and finances, which were not taught to them by their parents. First step is we had to gather information about them. We made the home visit. We did a personal visit to the employees' homes. This was done to assess the family situation and needs and to know if they can afford to amortize a housing loan because of the plan to have a housing assistance program. Only to find out that there were other concerns that needs attention. Specifically how to handle money, to be freed from loan sharks, gambling, drinking, and other vices. We had to educate them. So we had to stall the housing assistance program. What we did after this is to conduct a seminar. O utang layuan mo ako. I gave a four-day seminar, a series to enhance the financial literacy of the employees. This was due to what we found out in the home visit. It touches on savings, money management by getting out and how to handle debts. And as a way to help them, to kickstart their journey out of debt, TOPC has written off their company loan. First, kasalang TOPC, a mass wedding or kasalang bayan for TOPC employees who were either civilly wed or have already been living in for a number of years. This we found out in the home visit. By the way, this is my project paper for Master in Religious Studies in Don Bosco School of Theology, and I thank my advisor, Father Vicente Cervania. All the expenses were shouldered by TOPC except for their rings. There were a total of 12 couples for the first batch and 7 couples in the second. 2015, Year of the Poor. We partnered with San Junicio Credit Co-op. A, mem a memorandum of agreement was reached for all employees were required to join the co-op. This is a continuation of the O Utang Layuan Moko. Time to save. This is to teach them to save for their future. There is a share capital that earns better than what banks offer. All their income from gain sharing programs. Not government mandated benefits like bonuses, cash prices from competitions, cash prices from recognitions are deposited here. Next is Adopt a Poor Family Program. The employees have been receiving catechesis and help from TOPC. Everybody agreed that it is now time for them, the employees, to share their blessings. All the employees were divided into four groups. Each group adopted one very poor family living way below the poverty line in the barangay where TOPC is situated. The different groups were left to their creativity on how to help their adopted family with regard to their physical, emotional, mental, financial, and spiritual well-being. It is now their turn to home visit and find out the condition and need of their adopted family. All groups treated the children to meals, to an outing, and contributed in giving each family a startup business for their livelihood. More importantly, each group initiated Bible and life sharing sessions with the family. Okay, now since we believe in holistic formation, we also have an environmental preservation program. Uh, we had tree planting at Villa Socorro and TOPC partnered with Haribon Foundation and participated in their uh, multiply 
uh, program at tree planting activity in the valley and their punlaan project in Lumban, Laguna. We also have a recycling program where all the factory's wastes are recycled. All our wastes are recyclable and all the income gathered is used to fuel some of the employees' activities. Next, we have an outreach program where we visited Bahay ni Maria in Calamba. It is a home for very poor, abandoned, and neglected old women. And here we gave them some of their needs, yung mga consumables sila, and their maintenance medicines. 2016 was the year of the Eucharist and the family. The first activity that we had here is the second Kasalang TOPC, where there were seven couples who validated their marriages. Okay, next, we had Ang Misa. It is a five-session seminar about the Mass. Similar to what Father Francis did, pero siyempre iba si Father Francis. The Eucharist was explained to the employees, its parts, its history, and its significance. The Eucharist as a meal, a sacrifice, a memorial, and Jesus' real presence was explained for the employees to have a better appreciation of the Mass. Uh, next was the start of livelihood seminars. This is for the employees, the housewives, the house husbands, for additional knowledge, to be able to start a small business or use what they learned at home. Seminars given included soap making, candle making, meat processing, pastry making, small scale tilapia farming, bio wall, technology, reflexology, makeup, and hairstyling. Okay, 2017 was the year of the parish as a communion of communities. Uh, TOPC and its employees pitched in and contributed to help the victims of the Marawi siege. Next, we started a five-minute daily gospel reading. Hanggang ngayon, ginagawa namin to. Uh, this, is a, this is done before the start of work. This is aimed to encourage the habit of reading the Bible daily. Um, ano to eh? uh, we read the, the gospel for the day. All the readings for the day, we read that. And uh, then reflect the whole day with what you read. Okay. And so, since we are holistic, we had next uh, a fiesta of festivals. It is an awareness of social cultural activities of our country like Penagbenga, Kadayawan, Moriones, Pahias, etc. to instill nationalism. A competition of traditional Filipino games were played. Yung mga hindi na natin nalalaro ngayon ng mga bata uh, like Patintero, Luxong Tinik, Palo Cebo, Sipa, Agawang Bahay, uh, at saka Piko. This is to remind them of the Filipino games which are not commonly played nowadays anymore. Okay, we also in involved the children of the employees here. It culminated with a Buddha fight. Okay, for 2018, the year of the clergy and the religious. Ito na yon, at long last, it finally happened. The housing, housing assistance program. This was the dream and it already started to be a reality to bring those in the depressed areas out of it. The OPC bought repossessed townhouse units in Jestra Villas in Paranaque, paid the equity and other documentation fees, and initially financed the cost of repairs of the units. The OPC assisted employees to apply for bank loans with the lowest interest rates possible. The recipients of this are those who follow the advice in O Utang Layuan Mo Ako and are now debt free and they have savings in San Judicia Credit Cooperative, meaning they can afford to pay amortization through salary deduction. And this is to bring them out of the depressed areas. Okay, dito sa 2019, the year of the youth, dito, I, I'm very excited with this. Uh, we have this summer job program. Uh, this program has been running for years now, but I place it here to emphasize TOPC's commitment to evangelize the youth. 
This program is for the employees' children, ages 14 and up. Parang an internship where they are given uh, menial work for them to get a feel of what it is like to work. This does not only help the family financially. Kasi instead of spending money during summer breaks, doing nothing and playing around, these children are earning money. And more so, uh, it also helps their relationship among the family. There are cases kasi where when parents are not in speaking terms with their children. This is a venue for them to bond. Sipin mo ha, kasabay mo pumasok. Kasabay mo kumain. Kasabay mo umuwi. And there are stories to tell about this. The children are given simple tasks and receive a daily allowance for their work. At the end of the summer, they buy their own school supplies, their own uniform, others buy cell phones, si iba, tiyatabi nila yung pera for baon or for future need. TOPC want them to see the value of work, the value of money, saving for a future need, and also value the sacrifice their parents endure to provide for them. There is a requirement though. The only, re the only requirement, aside from being children of TOPC employees, ha, is that they must be currently enrolled in school. Kaya they are doing their best to pass. Kasi nga, they are looking forward to the summer job. Naging balkada na sila eh. They also have their own BLS, facilitated by one of the leaders. Uh, I think, dalawang beses ako nag, uh, nag-facilitate sa kanila. And this summer job program culminates with a one-day recollection. Uh, later on, we develop leaders within the group and actually now we have one who is in the seminary who just finished philosophy okay they also joined the summer sports program of TOPC sila sali namin sila sa mga uh, competitions okay next uh, we have marriage renewal in chapel on the hill all the married couples especially those who took part in the kasalan TOPC uh, renewed their vows this came of course, with a couple spiritual recollection. Kape Kwentuhan Kababaihan I was tasked to form an all-women group, most of them are young, that would support the wives and female employees of TOPC. They meet monthly. Values are thought to these women while having a chance to bond and take some time off, or what others call me time, that would give respite to the stressful management of the household. Here, they talk about anything, like their insecurities, diet, sickness, dreams, plans, doubts, past, troubles, etc. This is therapeutic for them because they can unload what weighs them down. My heart's desire for these women to change the way they see themselves. Our tagline, I am beautiful, I am God's beloved, and I am loved. KKK has grown, expanded, and now serving the mothers of Eugenia Ravasco School and now having exploratory meetings with the Holy Family School. Ecumenism and Interreligious Dialogue 2020 We celebrated KKK's first anniversary. We had special guests, namely the 1st District Congressman of Paranaque, Eric Olivares, Ms. Christine Jacob Sandejas, Father Mel Raselis SDB from Talisay Cebu, and the Seymour Band of the Philippine Army. Talaan ng patotoo ay pasasalamat kay Kristo, an offshoot of KKK which is open if, even to the men of TOPC. It is basically a gratitude journal, a testimony of gratefulness to God for all the blessings received. Employees and KKK members are encouraged to post in social media the blessings they receive. We are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Work stopped, kahit saan, walang trabaho for a few months. And TOPC, to be able to help their employees, came up with Thousand Oaks Pantawid Community Quarantine. During the enhanced community quarantine, TOPC assisted the employees in different ways. We advanced half of the 13th month pay, we converted to cash all the employees' vacation leaves and sick leaves. We provided and still provide food allowance, 
for their families which is now more popularly called ayuda and we give this on a bi-monthly basis okay let's talk about awards because the, the workforce is motivated commendations were given by customers like best in delivery best in quality supplier of the year regional and eventually the national winner in a productivity olympics of nwpc dole TOPC was showcased by NWPC Dole as a model workplace. We also became a finalist in the Kapatid Awards of ECHO. Australian Catholic University picked TOPC as one of the 10 establishments in the Philippines by business students from, the, from this university who are on a study tour. They visited UST, Ateneo, San Miguel, I think even Unilever. And here is TOPC. A David the Mongol Ayats. The students focus on social entrepreneurship, real life work in the Philippines, the human resource management and how they recruit, maintain, and develop employees. They touched on how businesses can contribute to bring a more just society in line with Catholic social teaching. Okay, in closing, may I say that in treating the employees as family, their perspective changed. And so did ours. The people who were try, we were trying to help have taught us a lesson or two about being human. We discovered our vocation as children of God. We are one big family who need each other. We are a Christian workplace, a Catholic, who believe that everything is grace and that we have to cooperate with the grace we receive. God has placed us in charge of a business for a purpose, and our purpose is to follow Christ and share in His mission of love through the Holy Spirit's guidance. All these happen because God is in charge. Thank you very much. Kapatid, is it not wonderful in a word ko na pwede pala tayong to be greater than who we are if our hearts are in the right place kung ating puso ay nasa kamay ng Diyos at ang Diyos ang gagalaw ang Diyos ang magbibigay inspirasyon at bibigyan ng lakas para mag, mangyari nga ang kanyang kaharian sa puso ng ibang tao. Yan po ang na-feel ko ngayon, this evening, nang ma-review ko ulit ang senior ni Benji at ni Pebbles Puyat at ng TOPC. Ngayon po, nagsama po kami Andito si Benji, andyan si Pebbles, andyan si, sino si Rene ba? Um, Pebbles and Benji, sino kasama natin sa inyong grupo? Andyan Bud Vidal. Pardon again? Uh, ben Marasigan and Bubut Vidal. 
Kay Father. Ang kasama natin si Beth. And Mubut Bidad. And Leo so, yes. Okay. So meron po tayong apat. Yung dalawang mag-asawa na si Benji at saka si Pebbles. Sila po ang sabihin natin God's stewards sa TOPC. Pero andyan si Beth Marasigan na andyan din si Mr. Bidad. Okay. So, meron pa iba? Leo sa inyo. Leo. Leo rin. Okay, tatlo. Ah, lima, lima si lahat. Bakit ho inimbita ko sila? Eh kasi baka meron kayong gusto ngayong i-comment at lalo na itanong. Kasi ako mismo nasasabi sa iyo, nangyayari pala ito eh. Hindi naman kayo ikaw maging kailangang bilyonaryo para sabi mo, makatulong lang ako pag marami na akong pera eh. Hindi eh. So magandang tanong yun siguro ito mag-asawa ito at yung experience ng kanilang mga kasama, kamukha nila Beth, si Leo, Mr. Marasigan, uh, Mr. Bidad. Um, para lalong ho, ma-appreciate ninyo ang programa natin na totoo ang pamilya ay pwedeng mag-transform ng isang lipunan. Particularly in the area of concern becomes an area of influence. Ayan. Meron po bang mga gusto na magtanong? Gusto po siguro magbigay uh, ng kanilang sabihin natin. Ito, sinabi na isa si Nela na TOPC has a lot of programs that helps every employee grow emotionally and spiritually. Sabi ni Exit, so proud to be a family with TOPC. Isa din ako sa nakawitness how the employees change our whole life. So God bless them. Sabi ni Oscar Luna, may you continue to be blessed in your endeavors. <clears throat> Pareho daw na feel namin, sabi ni Jay Kuracha. Okay? Meron po ba? Melody, praying that you, Brother Benji, and Maria Maria the Pebbles may inspire more employers to reach out to the employees. So, meron pong ganito. Na, hindi lang commendation, pero may desire. Your obedience and love to do God's will is an inspiration. Um, may, may, ah, siguro magsimula lang ako, no? Benji and Pebbles. Uh, Siyempre, marami ding challenges to. Anong pinakamalaking challenge na kita niyo nung simula about this work of God na pinapagawa sa inyo? <laughs> okay, father ako na muna. Uh, ang challenge dito is nung una talaga, how to start it? Paano ba natin sisimulan to At saka, yung question lagi sa isip natin, maniniwala kaya yung mga employees natin, pagka ginawa natin itong mga programs, o oh, maumpisa natin yung mga program na ito. And I guess, the, the, ano, uh, part of our management team are here to attest to this. Marami, mas, marami silang may kukwento siguro tungkol dito. Uh, meron kami mga kasama dito. By the way, no, si Mr. Pidat and uh, Ben Marasigan are our rogationist before. Tapos si Leo Sinyal was a former, Leo, pasensya ka na, sabihin ko lang, he was a former Jesus Miracle Crusade. And we, when he joined the uh, uh, Thousand Ox Packaging, uh, he came home to the Catholic. Uh, Catholic. Okay. Uh, kayo, Mr. Vidad, Manasigan, pwede po ba kayo mag-sharing? Are you putting it... Uh, Nasa Zoom ba sila? Yes po. Yeah, yes, yes. Please. Okay. Uh, I'm Ben Marasigan po. At isa po ako doon sa saksi na kung paano po yung uh, ginawa din na ni Mr. Kuyat and Mrs. Kuyat na medyo talaga pong sa una mahirap yung alam mo yung, yung ganito kasi uh, syempre mga tao lagi ang habol lang nila kumita ng pera magtrabaho. So yung, yung pag Paano mo i-inject yung spiritual uh, part na natin? Yun medyo mahirap. Kasi simula po, medyo talaga 
medyo hesitant yung iba uh, na umaten. Tsaka isa pa po is iba-iba po eh. Hindi naman lahat katoliko yung nandoon sa kumpanya. Merong mga uh, born again, merong iglesia, meron pa nga na kami nakasama na Muslim. So parang hindi po ganun ganon So ito pong ginawa namin is talagang medyo uh, struggle din po nung una. Aha. Meron tayo dito, Benji, kayo. Um, ben, uh, what were your key indicators or pointers to such an endeavor? And you see it blooming now. <laughs> Father, pwede bang magdagdag muna na isang challenge? Isa oh, sige. Uh-huh. Challenge na uh, pinahanakita ko for the whole um, activities dito sa 500 years from 2013. When we were doing it and we were um, answering or um, sumusunod kami dun sa, sa gusto ng church or our participation, pinaka-challenge sa akin yung pagiging administrator and then ministering at the same time. Ito mm-hmm. talaga yung pinaka-difficulty kasi... It's an arduous task, but then if you be good, may may ano eh, may abuse ka nila. If you be bad, they criticize you. So you cannot please everybody. Pero um, pinaka naging strategy namin, ako nakita ko, siguro kaya naging very successful itong um, all these years, itong until now, yung pagiging present. Not just physically present, but then yung yung email story father yung strategy na yun na we approach them yung kaya nag immersion kami we approach them we walk with them we join them in conversation we eat with them we accompany them we listen with empathy and we listen with loving heart tapos nung nagkaroon kami ng chance parang mas na enhance pa yung bible and life sharing kasi we were able to share the word of god pero ang importante doon not just repeating the word of god eh it is to help them see the relevance of the word of god in the shed that shed light in their daily daily experiences kasi maraming marami talagang pinagdaanan yung years na yan ang ginagawa namin yung mga activities for the church but we look forward kasi yung hope na kahit anong problema nila dinidisiplin mo sila we invite them to have relationship with god and the simplicity we have to be present in the simple living also in simplicity namin in choice yun, Father. Choice yun to accept it. May mga nakita kaming talagang nagbago naman. Ang dami na. Ang dami with this activity. Marami. Ilan na lang siguro, mabibilang ko kung 100 sila ngayon. Meron kami isa, isa, dalawa, tatlo talagang struggling. Pero God is good by the grace of God. Yung uh, unbelievable. And um, ito yung sasabihin ko, yung, yung isang yung doon ko lang na hindi na rinig yung word yung may leaf pala na katakataka kasi sabi ni Father Mel sa isang homily niya na unbelievable madali siyang mag-grow itapon mo lang madali mag-grow so ganito yung siguro yung naging fruit nung nung project na yung challenge namin na balance namin because we are present and when you throw love they give back the love okay very good syempre sabi nga nila eh no Ang uh, hirap pero ang sikreto na andun sa administration din eh. <laughs> Di ba? Kasi pag uh, nandun ang nitigriti ika nga eh. No? Pero sabi mo nga tama yan. Beyond the administration is the relationship and that requires presence. No? Tsaga, pasensya. Ay ganun naman ang Diyos sa atin eh. Ever present. Oh. So uh, itong natanong nila dito, ano daw yung inyo naging parang parameters or parang key Sabi niya dito eh, key indicators na sabi mo, ito dapat ang sana, ito sana ang maabot ng endeavor na to. Naggawa ba ng parang ganun sa inyong mind? Using the paradigm of the church? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Father. Uh, well, basically kasi Father, ano eh, nung una, uh, sinasabi ko nga kanina na we have mass every every month meron kaming celebration of the mass pero alam mo you just go through the motions uh, sumusunod lang pero alam mo na na hindi masyadong tagos pero later on uh, sabi namin hindi naman pwedeng pilipilit natin sila umaten pero hindi natin pinapaliwanag kung kung, kung sino ba talaga ang Panginoon na pinapaniwalaan natin na, na dapat pakita natin sa kanila so Pero yung, yun nga, nung nag-aral kami sa Don Bosco, 
uh, nabuksan yung mata namin. We were really enlightened na uh, hindi lahat ng tao kasi na kakaranas ng ng religion subject, hindi nakakaranas ng ng ano ng uh, catechism, uh, hindi lahat naka, naka-experience noon. And the only way to be able to help them understand this is to be able to explain to them. And and this is what uh, uh, what we did nung challenge kami ninyo, Father, you were part of this na you challenge us. What what will you do? What will you do? Hindi naman pwedeng nanonood ka lang na Yes, you believe na kailangan meron mag- may mag- mga pagbabago mangyari, pero kayo mismo, anong gagawin ninyo? Hindi pwede nanonood lang tayo. Kailangan meron tayong gawin. Hindi naman kailangan, tama yung sabi ni Father, na, ako, I, I believe that kami, hindi naman kami mayaman talaga. Pero syempre, compare mo sa mga employees namin, we are well off uh, compared to them, pero hindi naman kailangan maraming pera para makatulong kayo. Kailangan lang, it has to do, ano eh, magkaroon ka ng ng ano ng uh, will uh, ng puso sabi nga puso kailangan lang natin na uh, umpisahan ito tapos li- let let the spirit uh, guide you guide uh, laging laging ganun po it's it's all with prayer everything that we do we ask God's guidance uh, salamat na papasalamat ako at uh, yung yung team namin is very spiritual also uh, si Bubut Bidad is also your student father kung hewo ko na alala mo pero sa janat mo rin siya sure, uh, 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 yun father we 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 always do this while meeting down yes uh, pwede ring magshare po yes yes please okay just uh, totoo po yun father na i am not uh, just an examinerian ako din ay nagiging product ng don bosco school of theology And I am very proud to say na isa ako sa inyong nagiging estudyante. <laughs> And most of all, isa kayo sa aking panelists sa aking comprehensive oral examination during, during those times. At uh, hindi ko inakala na after na lumabas sa religious life ay pag ni tayo. And then it happened na nag tayo. Yes. My experience with the Thousand Oaks ay... Nagsimula ako na nagtrabaho sa Tao San Oaks in 2005 sa pagpumilit ng aking asawa. Then, hindi ko pinagsisihan. Kasi, naalala ko yung sinabi ng aking dating post. Sabi niya, yo, ikaw ay dating seminaryan, dating religious, nag-aral ng theology. I thought na noong i-hire ka namin ay mayroong mangyayari sa spiritual life ng ating kumpanya. Uh-huh. So, medyo, medyo nagtaka ako. Then, I left that uh, that uh, company and I joined uh, Thousand Oaks Packaging Corporation in 2005. Then, yun. May mga struggles as HR. Kasi, uh-huh. uh, I was the one, I am the one handling yung discipline ng mga tao. In <laughs> real just term, yung prefect of discipline sa seminary. <laughs> yeah, okay. And sabi ko, napakahirap maghawak ng tao. Ay, there were times na mas na hinahangaan ko yung aming mga operators kasi wala silang pakialam sa paligid nila, ma-operate lang nila ang kanilang makina, and after that, wala na. But for us, sa bilang HR hindi, until doon sa bahay, daladala mo, yung nagiging problema mo sa isang tao. Uh-oh. But then, dahil dito sa ano, nagiging spiritual, itong spiritual formation, after some years being HR, napakadali na pala ang magiging HR sa Thousand Oaks. After na-implement yung aming Bible and Life sharing, isa sa pinakamadaling trabaho sa isang kumpanya ay HR. Hmm because of the spiritual transformation of our employees. Napaka-proud ko pa noon na oh, malaki ang aking magiging contribution sa Thousand Oaks. We will, I will help the president and the vice president to transform the people. Only, pero later on nakita ko na hindi pala, ako pala yung dapat pa-transform. 
na dapat yung sinasabi ko, itatransform ko sila. Little by little, ako dapat pala ang dapat matransform. And I am part of those employees na we we are trying to to transform na sabay-sabay. And I'm napaka-thankful ako na na in a way medyo na sambit ko kaya yung na na nagiging ngayon pwede ko nang sabihin ng aking boss si Sir Benji at saka si Ma'am Pebbles ay nagiging schoolmate ko na ngayon kasi sila ay dati na ring uh, estudyante ng 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 Don Bosco. Uh-huh. And ito ang kung meron akong isang ipinagmamalaki sa Thousand Oaks ay tama po ang mga nabanggit. We are trying to mold to yung in vibe, yung spirituality and thank God, may mga iba na lumalapit sa amin. Sir, pwede ko pwede ba ako kasama sa pagpapakasal? Hindi pa kami kasal. Sir, pwede ba, ba akong magpa-rebaptize sa Catholic Church? May mga may mga ganito. And ano ano namin? Well, we don't have a, I don't have anything to boast kung ano ang ang, ang aking na i-contribute. But one thing, kung meron merong isa ay ang aking ang aking self-awareness na pwede pala akong kahit wala na ako sa religious life, pa, kahit wala na ako sa ministry, pwede pa lang pwede pa lang ma-involve doon sa sa pagbabago ng isang pagbabago ng community. And I am very thankful kasi pag pag alis ko, sabi ko tama na. Kalimutan ko na lahat na nalalaman ko sa theology. But when I when I entered at uh, entered the Thousand Oaks, napabalik napapalit uh-huh. yung yung dati kong yung dati kong sigla, de yung dati kong yung yung pagkagusto ko na magiging katekista ulit, na magbibigay ulit ng mga talk sa amin mga empleyado kasi uh, before I entered the, the seminary, ako ay nagiging katekista din father. Okay. So uh, part <clears throat> ako ng Thousand Oaks. Hindi lang ako part sa mga formators, pero part din ako doon sa being formed as Uh, sabi natin mga trying hard na magiging Christian o Catholic Christian and na, thankful ako kay Ma'am at saka kay Sir actually Father when in 2017 I tendered my irrevocable <laughs> resignation oh. pero sabi pwede pang tapusin mo muna yung pangalawang batch ng ating kasalambayan and hindi ko na mamalayan 2020 na 3 years ago na nakalimutan ko na yung ano nakalimutan ko na yung yung irrevocable resignation ko and i'm very happy working with uh, sir benji ma'am pebbles and of course with sir ben and sir leo and i am very thankful of thousand oaks kasi palagi kong sinasabi kung ano man ang meron ako ngayon it is because of the blessings that i receive from thousand oaks uh, they, they sabi na nagiging instrumento sila sa mga blessings na natatanggap ko sa araw-araw. And by that, may God be praised. God be blessed too. Nakita niyo po ba kapatid, ano? na <clears throat> ang religion talaga hindi lang pang simbahan. Ang religion is really what works in the relationships, even in the workplace. And through the workplace, itong ginawa ng Thousand Oaks with Benji and Pebbles, pumasok sa pamilya ng employee. Naging tulay ang employee sa pagpapabuti ng kanyang pamilya. ba? Diba? Madalas, akala natin ang pamilya magpapabuti ng lipunan. Pero kapag sa lipunan <clears throat> merong tamang organization na kabukan ito, nakita nyo, holistic ang approach sa isang employee sa workplace, even the workplace can have an influence in family life. Yan ang nakita ko dito. Meron pa ako kayong gustong itanong. Uh, this is, ano, layo nito ha. Si Marisa Ayento. Sabi niya, this is a good business model, faith-based. Alam niyo si Marisa is from uh, Washington, D.C. 
uh, she's been working with, uh, I think, either World Bank or International Fund, IFC. Sabi niya, it would be great if you could convince other businesses to follow your model. Pero kaya ito pwedeng sabihin dyan, di ba? Uh, Benji and Pebbles. Are there already some others? Uh, tama ba ako? Book sale ba? Others were trying to uh, use the model? You have been invited once by uh, uh, they want to can you BLS, can you help us? Uh, we were invited by Sydney's sister, one of her classmates, father. Uh -huh. uh, they invited us to to share with them the BLS, and uh, and we did. And then uh, later on, they were inviting us back there uh, to show us na ginagawa na nila. And also, we are trying also to every time that we have you know, uh, uh, audits. So, she represent yung ano tong company namin sa mga uh, either the company uh, company na mag-audit sa amin o kaya yung company na yung audit namin eto si Ben ang nagpe-present lagi uh, she, we we share this and hopefully we the lord will inspire them to to not siguro to follow or to do the same and uh, so far naman, kahit yung mga Japanese companies, they, they have very positive feedback about this. Pero yung alam, no? uh, one thing I want to reiterate yung sinabi rin ni Bubut, no? when we started doing programs like this, we were hoping that we will change them. Pero yung alam, parang ano eh, two-way process. We try to change them, pero actually kami yung nababago na our perspective change. Na yung nababago yung tingin namin sa mga employees namin na we see them as as part of our family also. Pero yun nga, ibigay ng sharing dito kasi siya yung gumagawa lagi yan. <laughs> yung, sir, yung company, regarding yung mga company na uh, bumaya sa atin ay uh, mga wala pang one year ago, uh, wife ng isang empleyado namin ay lumapit sa lumapit sa akin, sabi niya, uh, Sir, pwede bang makahingi ng tulong at uh, kung meron kayong kaibigan na pare, kasi gusto rin namin magkaroon ng mas doon sa aming kumpanya, katulad ng ginagawa ninyo. And then, sabi nga, sabi pa nung asawa ng aming empleyado, kasi naririnig niya doon sa asawa niya yung ginagawa sa Thousand Oaks. And by words of mouth, nasabi rin niya ng, sa kanyang boss and then yung kanyang boss nagsimula rin na nag-organize ng recollection para sa kanilang ano sa kanilang sa kanilang kumpanya although this, yung kumpanya nila ay isang agency pero sabi ko siguro isa rin ng ano by, by words of mouth na naikwento ng kanyang asawa yung mga ginagawa namin ngayon may mga ibang gustong sumunod gumaya doon sa ginagawa na, namin and thanks be to God at uh, in our own little way, may mga gustong, gustong, gustong ano, sumu uh, gumaya doon sa mga ginagawa namin. Alam niyo ba kapatid, na-realize ko na, kasi kami sa Don Bosco, St. John Bosco, no, very important sa amin ang, uh, sabi ko dito eh, that we could transmit to the children and the next generation the faith. Pero dito sa Thousand Oaks, sa ginawa niyo, Pebbles and Benji, kinuha niyo yung mga above 14 years old, no? So probably, ilang ilang years na itong program ito sa summer program ng mga kabataan. Kasi even after the lockdown, tama ba? Nung naging uh, hindi na ECQ, bumalik yung summer program. Ng, in fact, may mga bata bang in, uh, uh, apprentice? Yes, Father. Uh, ngayon? Yeah, father, alam mo, ito, very excited ako dito sa program. Yung ngayon, yeah, well, yung ngayon, Father, may mga... Uh, Nag-summer job sa amin dati, kaya pumapasok sa amin. Pero uh, as of now, bawal kasi sila lumabas pa. So 18 and below, alam ko bawal pa lumabas sa mga bata. So uh, hindi lang namin mapayagan ma ulit sila at we are waiting for them. Kasi two-way process din to, natutulungan nila kami, natutulungan din namin sila. Pero Father, ito yung, kaya ako tuwan-tuwa dito sa program, uh, summer job program kasi uh, since nahawakan ko yung ibang mga bata, even Ilo Cruz was one of those who handled them, eh, 
nakita mo na noong una, may mga problema yung magulang at saka yung anak. Usually yung anak ang may problema sa magulang. Uh-huh. Pero later on, Father, dahil nga dito sa program na to, nagkakaroon ng special bond yung, at saka nagkakaroon ng healing yung relationship na dati hindi nag-uusap. Dati, yung, meron akong isang bata na hinawakan na pinapalo siya ng dos pot dos ng tatay niya, pero ngayon they are in good terms now. Meron isang bata dati na well, nagsumubok na, na matay. Pero now, they have a very good relationship with the, with the, with the Uh, with the dad. Kasi nga, dito sa sa program na to, hindi lang namin sila nabibigyan ng trabaho, kundi yung relationship nila, hindi na magulang, at saka at the same time, yung faith natin, na ipapasa natin dun sa mga bata, dito sa mga anak na, alam naman namin na yung mga employees namin, natututo na sila, natuturo na yung mga anak nila, pero maganda rin yung nakikita namin sila, kami mismo nag, nagbibigay ng Bible life sharing sa kanila, nagbibigay kami ng catechism sa kanila, we also Uh, uh, involve them in you know, inner projects. Yung, yung mga kagaya dati sa mga home visit, kasama namin yung mga anak namin. And Ben, I want you to say something about this. Oh, okay. Sige, Ben. Ano, ben. Si, ano, yung anak mo. Okay. So yung anak ko po is isa doon sa next summer job. At malaking bagay po eh. Kasi yun yung sinasabi ni boss na kasi habang nagta-travel ka may papasok kasi I'm from Binyang Laguna. So I'm from Binyang Laguna. So meron kaming oras uh, habang papuntang Thousand Oaks, yan nakakapagkwentuhan kami. I mean, hindi kami kasi ganun ka ka close ng anak ko. Kasi uh, mostly laging yang mami niya ang kasama niya sa bahay. Saka mami niya nag uh, nag uh, ano ng problema niya kung ano meron siyang pinagtataanan. Pero nung mag-start siya ng mag-summer job. Kasi ako, siyempre, lagi akong nasa trabaho eh. Uh, gabi na ako nakaka-uwi. Maaga, pagdalis ko sa bahay, tulog. Pagdating ko sa bahay, uh, halos tulog na rin. So, wala na akong time talaga makipag-usap sa kanya. Pero during the, ano, yung time, yung years na nag-summer job siya, mas, nag, ano yung aming father and son relationship. Alam niya, yung, yung maganda, yung naging, naging ano, na, nakakapag-open siya sa akin. Na, Uh, kasi di ba normally ang, ang lalaki, ang anak, yun, sa mami talaga yan eh. So sa amin, na-develop siya at kahit hanggang ngayon, lalo na nga ngayon nito nag-lockdown, talagang pag kumakain kami, I mean, nakakapag-open na kung may problema o pinagdadaan na. At maganda, maganda po yung, yung resulta kasi din na yun ding, uh, yung value nung pag-iipon ng pera. Kasi siya talagang nag-iipon siya tapos nakakabili pa siya ng mga gamit niya. Siya ni bumibili ng kanyang mga school supplies. O nakakaipon pa siya. Nakaka ano po yan ah? One time pa nung parang alala ko nung unang-una yan. Tinreat pa kami ng mami niya. O wow. ako ako muna magti-treat. Ako magti-treat sa inyo ngayon ah kasi kumita ako eh kasi may allowance sila eh. So ang ganda, ang ganda po nung project. At yun din nga po uh, dugdag dagdag dito dug, dug, sa sinabi ni Sir Benji. Kasi nakapag-handle din ako sa kanila one of the BLS sessions. Talagang meron pong mga, hindi naman natin maiwasan niya. Minsan meron mga misunderstandings ang, uh, ang, ang anak at sa magulang. At lumalabas po yan during the BLS na talagang sinasabi nila yung problema. So parang kami po ay nagsilbing bridge. Ang Thousand Oaks ay nagsilbing bridge. Parang yung, yung gap na yon ay unti-unti mabuuli. At uh, may, may, may mga ano naman, hindi, hindi po lahat yun, siyempre. Medyo nagtatagal din kasi. Kailangan po kasi din i-process. Oh. So, yun Next po. Next week, pwede isang, si Jay, available sa Google. So, napoprocess, napoprocess po namin unti-unti yung mga ganun. Nabibridge namin. Good. So, hopefully lahat po yan. Kung baga, uh, alam nakikita rin kasi nung mga bata yung value nung binibigay na chance sa kanila to to work, to earn and yung yung spiritual life din po nila is manurture. Kasi tumatanda na rin kami. So sila na yung mga papalit eh sa generation natin. So kailangan natin <clears throat> unting turuan na. Eh yeah, medyo puti na ho yung buhok ko. So 
Uh, so, kailangan na natin ding, kumbaga, ipasa din sa kanila. Turuan natin sila. Kasi uh, later on, ang mag, ano, uh, magpapatuloy nitong ganitong mga proyekto. Yeah. Leo Senyal. Andiyan ba si Leo Senyal? Uh, Leo Senyal ba yan? Yes, ito. You want, you want to share something sa company? Oh. Ako po, since na, na nasa production ako, Dati, nung nag-umpisa ako mag-trabaho uh, sa Thousand Oaks, uh, ang religion ko ay Jesus Miracle Crusade International Ministry. Uh -huh. Ngayon, nung na-invite ako ni Boss na mag-share doon sa Light of Jesus, na-share ko yung status ko. Uh, nung time na yun, eh, alam naman natin, pag ano, mahihain, hindi halos hindi makapagsalita sa harap ng tao. Pero ang sabi ko, boss, paano ba ang gagawin ko dahil hindi ako sanay humarap ng maraming tao? E sabi na, tutulungan ka ng Panginoon niyan. Siya ang bahala sa iyo. Di, nung pagkakataon na yon, di parang, parang matutunaw ako dun sa harap ng maraming tao. Hindi eh, ko pa mga kilala. Pero uh, sa guide ng Panginoon, eh, nagawa ko yung pagkakataon na yon yung, yung uh, pag-invite sa akin ni eh, boss. Pero dati akong katoliko na nag shift ng ibang religion pero nung nakita ko na malaki yung o may may, may uh, tulong o yung uh, pag-guide din nabo sa akin nagbalik ka tuloy ko ako at uh, nakita ko din yung kumpanya nung nagumpisa na ako magtrabaho na yung nagpapatakbo ng kumpanya is na yung pagano nila sa mga tao, pag-care nila sa mga tao, nandun. Kasi sa dinabi namin ng kumpanya na pinasukan ko sa Thousand Oaks, na-mold ako dahil sa kanilang pag-guide sa akin. Dahil unang-una, Father, uh, unionista ako uh -huh. na nag-apply sa kanila. Hindi nila alam yun eh. Saka ko lang sinabi nung tinanggap nila ako. Eh. Pero dahil nga sa nakita ko, yung touring nila sa mga tao o yung pagtanggap nila, pagdadala nila sa mga tao, naisip ko na bakit ko gagawin yung ginawa ko sa ibang kumpanya. Dahil ka ako dito, hindi ako ibang tao sa kanila eh. Pamilya ako eh. Kapamilya ako eh. Pati pamilya ko, tinuring din nilang pamilya eh. Na yung mga pangangailangan mo, andyan sila. Kung ano nang kailangan mo uh, yung spiritual andyan sila financial andyan sila ngayon nung uh, habang tumatagal doon ko nakita na parang uh, sila na mismo yung nag sa amin o yung nag nagtuturo sa amin kung paano uh, ipagpatuloy o i natawag dito yung pag -ano sa, sa pagkilala o yung kung paano yung gusto mong gawin sa buhay mo. Dahil unang-una, ako hindi ako mahilig ma 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 magbasa ng Bible. Si Ma'am Pebbles yung nagturo sa akin kung paano o sige, nakakabasa ako ng Bible pero yung pag-intindi kung anong nakasulat doon, si Ma'am Pebbles ang nag sa akin tapos itinapaliwanag na sa akin. Yan, habang tumatagal, doon ko na-realize na kailangan ito para sa pang-araw-araw naming buhay. At uh, nai-share ko din sa aking pamilya. At uh, pati sa mga kasabahan ko sa trabaho, nabibigyan ko ng pagkakataon, ipaliwanag kung ano yung hindi nila naintindihan. Dahil uh, sabi nga kanina na Sir Bobot, may mga, pag, may mga pagkakataon o yung mga kasama kami na hindi nila maintindihan kung paano yung dapat gawin o anong gagawin dito. Dahil yung iba talaga, hindi naman kami pare-pareho ng religion, hindi sila aware doon sa ginagawa namin. Kaya sa, sabi ka, sa katsatsaga na ipaliwanag kung ano yung uh, ginagawa namin, unti-unti na iinggan nyo na rin namin sila o na-encourages namin sila. Ngayon, uh, 
tuloy-tuloy yung ginagawa namin na every morning bago magumpisa mo trabaho, yun muna na uh, magbasa kami ng Bible. Ka- five minutes, meron kami uh, inilalaan na oras na bayad ng kumpanya para gawin yun. At uh, pag uh, dating naman ng hapon, bago kami mang umuwi, meron gumagawa na magdasal. Meron naman simpleng gano lang. Simpleng magpapasalamat lang sa maghapon na buhay namin, na ligtas kami, na uuwi sa aming mga pamilya. Oh, okay. Kaya ganun yung, ganun yung ano namin sa... Pattern. Oh, ganun yung gawa namin sa kumpanya na hindi lang trabaho ang ipinunta namin doon. Parang sabi, simbahan na rin dahil Daladala namin ng Panginoon doon at doon din namin ginagawa na magpasalamat sa Kanya sa trabaho namin at saka sa kaligtasan ng bawat isa sa amin. Galing. Oo, tama. Tama yan, Leo. Kasi nga, eh, sabi nga nila, pag ang, 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 ang Panginoon panlinggo lang from Monday to Saturday, eh kanina yon kung ang Diyos panlinggo, eh di, siguro sa demonyo rin yun, di ba? Kasi kung hin, ang, ling, ang linggo lang para sa Diyos, pa um, isang oras galang eh. So, mahalaga siguro na na-integrate na yung iyong paniniwala, pananalig, pananampalatay, na dasal. Sabi nga nila Benji, misa, misa, misa lang. Ngayon na unawaan mo ang halaga ng Diyos. At na parang tama ba ang aking perspective, ang pers- uh, sensitivity dyan na Pebbles and, uh, and Benji? Ang isang quality ng inyong uh, Sabihin natin, a workplace ethics is nagsisimula sa salita ng Diyos ang, ang isang araw kasi nga meron silang personal time to to know the Word of God. At tapos, before you end the day, may panalangin na sana nga maging maayos hanggang pag-uwi. So ang Diyos ay talagang bahagi ng trabaho. At lalo na yung salita ng Diyos malakas sa inyong company, di ba? sa BLS. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Uh, actually, ano, uh, ang sinasabi lagi namin sa kanila, when you read the gospel for the day, yung five minutes na yun, you reflect the whole day. You 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 see how God works sa buhay mo yung, yung buong araw na yun. Uh, actually, Father, ikaw nagtuto sa amin ito. Ikaw ang mentor ko sa Bible and Life Sharing, yung project paper na ikaw nag ikaw nagbigay sa akin lahat ng inputs about that and uh, sinasa buhay ko lang father yung mga binigay mo sa aking aral na yan and uh, it is all about him it's all about God yung, yung buhay natin uh, hindi, 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 hindi tungkol sa amin kung hindi tungkol sa kanya father, pa, bago tayo matapos kasi mayroong interesado ako dito sa KKK eh. uh, kasi sabi mo tama ba ang naintindihan ko yung in charge men, yung KKK Outreach sa to sa ibang babae na hindi empleyado ng TOPC. Tama ba ako? Yes, Father. Yes, Father. So, it's... ibig sabihin yung em- itong mga empleyadong babae ba? O asawa? Asawa, pinsan, kamag-anak. Lumabas na siya, Father. Basta employee ka, meron kang meron gustong uh, babae na mag-join, pwede. Now, ah. when sa school, ang mga mothers ng school, which is the Eugenio Rabasco, it's a multinational din, Father. It all started because of the Bible and life sharing. Yung stories nila for two years, yung mga women na inahandle ko, they, I, I really, when I heard their stories, grabe yung puso ko, Father. But it, it, it touches me so much. Uh, I pray to the good Lord, paano ba ito matutulungan? Paano ma, ma-boost yung confidence nila to be beautiful and God's beloved always. Pero I'm saying, I'm saying, Pebbles, nagsimula ba KKK sa mismong empleyadong babae? O, in, pre, di ba panilalaki ba ang empleyado? Hindi naman. Hindi, puro halos lalaki, Father. Nag-umpisa sa mga asawa. Asawa nila, nila yeah. tama. Em, eh, asawa. At so saka, ngayon, ang facilitators nyo, ang asawa ng inyong mga empleyado? Meron din. At, yes, Father, meron din. Ah, pero ah, sila ba ang ano, recipients ng KKK? Yes, sila. Yes, pa. Ah, okay. Uh-huh. Ito ba yung nangyari na meron, meron silang pwede silang marunong mag, magpakul, magkulot 
Yun ba? Iba pa yun, Father. Yun yung mga ano, um, livelihood programs. Ah, iba pa yun. Mga empleyado. Ah, uh, pero ang KKK actually is labas na. Uh, labas. Start na from inside uh, the wives, the cousins, the neighbors. Ngayon nasa labas na rin siya. But it's still uh, continuous. As continuous, as Father. As well. Lahat na. Naging tatlong dalawang grupo na nga eh. Oo. So, naintindihan, naintindihan ko na nagsimula doon sa mga asawa ng empleyado tapos sila rin inilalabas na nila with other women na kilala nila. Ano yan? Sa neighborhood o lumilipat kayo ng kamukha sa Rabasco Sisters? O oh, yung Rabasco Sisters kasi yung isang mm-hmm. kasi mga katenis ko naman father yung nagsimula ah. Kaya, nag, by word of mouth, what are you doing with KKK? Na-inspire sila. So, when we brought it to K- Ravasco, mga mommies naman doon naging recipient. Ah, nanay na mga sudyante ba mga bata? Mommies ng sudyante, yes. Gusto oh. so, mo mga sisters eh, to train them also. Oo. Oh, oh. Pero most of these women are from the developing uh, uh, areas. Father. Eastern areas. Oh. Yes. Oh. Okay. Meron pa rin meron pang isang ano, meron pang yes, isang Benji. Pare, meron isang uh, program din na parang gusto ko lang bigyan ng emphasis no yung kasalang TOPC. Okay? Uh, kasi dito sa kasalang TOPC, meron kami mga employees din na hindi katoliko dati. Pero since sabi nila, we want to be part of your of the church. Tapos we want to also we also want to be Married in the church. Meron kami isang kasama dyan na pinabinyagan, pinakumpilan. Doon na rin nag, uh, nag, uh, nagkumpisal. First communion. First communion. Tapos, uh, yun, kasal, lima, limang ano, limang sacrifice, ano, sabay-sabay. I uh, use it, simultaneous. <laughs> so, it means meron talaga transformation from within na ngayon, uh, yeah, all the five sacraments natanggap niya and therefore na nurture yung kanyang kasal good yes okay so uh, kasi kailangan niyo rin kumain no kung mga atin uh, ano ano siguro po natin maging parting words kasi brothers and sisters nakita ko dito sa kanila na yung nine priorities ng ating simbahan na ituhog nila kasi yun ang isang problema ng sa simbahan eh sa Catholic Church natin, may nine priorities pero hindi nagamit in a what we would call a integrated manner. Sinimulan na sa faith formation, pumasok sa laiko, for the poor, for the family, for the uh, for the uh, priest and clergy and uh, religious, and then for the church, for the parish, and so forth and so on. Until sa mga youth, and now nasa interfaith dialogue. Um, wow. Uh, talagang preparation sa inyo sa aking background na gusto natin i-celebrate hindi lang sa isang misa pero ito po, nine years. And look at the effect on the lives of people. Itong ating natanggap na panampalataya nearly 500 years ago, buhay na buhay sa pamagitan ng gantong napakagandang programa. So, uh, are you documenting this, Benji and Pebbles? Yes, Father. Ah. And what are you intending with the documentation? Father, we are sharing it sa mga customers namin, sa mga suppliers namin, and all those who wants to hear our ano, uh, yung, yung witness namin, we, we share that. Kasi sabi, na, sabi nga namin na hindi mo pwede itago ito. Dapat to let, let us share this. We may be, the, the Holy Spirit may be inspiring also them to do something like this. Uh-huh. So that means, dahil documented, uh, may possibility to read and therefore, in their own way, replicate. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Uh, yeah. Pero ang, ang, ano, ang importante sa amin dito, Father, is that, um, Lagi ko sinasabi yun, I even mentioned it in our project paper, Father, na you don't have to go to a far flung place to be on mission. Yes. God places you where you are now because that is your mission field. Kung, kung nandito ka sa isang workplace, that is your mission field. If you're a teacher, 
that is your mission field. If, if you are a driver, that is your mission field. Kung sa kapitadala ng Panginoon, you should make the place bloom. You, can, you should bring the, the Lord where you are. Parang gano'n lang po yung, and, and that came from, from you, Father. Kung nasaan ka, dali mo ang Panginoon doon. At sigurado ko, He will work wonders. Thank you. That's a wonderful conclusion. Mga kapatid, ha? nakita ninyo sa beginning ng kanilang ano, meron silang uh, uh, tawag dito, meron silang uh, Facebook. Tama ba? May Facebook? At saka meron kayong uh, web- website. Meron din ang Quercus. Sa Instagram. Lahat oh. meron. Sa website. So, so website. A- ang pangalan ng website is Quercus ba o POPC? Thousand Oaks Packaging. Thousand Oaks Packaging Corporation. May website kayo. So you are reachable for yes, people yes. who are interested and find this very, not only inspiring, but wishing it could be somehow in their own manner, in their own situation, uh, a learning activity for them. Di ba? Yes, yes Father. Father, last lang sa akin, siguro yung for the TOPC family and this experience that you gave us to share, ito yung gratitude namin, yung gratefulness. Oh, na, salamat. Uh, yeah, we, we thank the good Lord for giving us. Even this one, kasi ako talaga si Philippians 1 sa akin sana, may, may the work of God began with us, complete its fulfillment. And also, allow God, the good Lord, to act to us courageously, especially now in this most difficult situation. Itong trying times ato, Father, talagang, it's God's work, it's not ours. So, all glory to Him. Nako, thanks be to God. Salamat, salamat. Alam niyo mga kapatid, so this is a wonderful segment. Uh, nasabi ko na na ito ay naka, naka-store naman po sa sadly ang itong, itong time of question and answer, hindi po ito naka-record eh. So it's something that probably we'll have to know how to work it out. Pero um, But the program is recorded and therefore it is found in the YouTube channel po. It is there in the playlist of the 52-week project. Uh, sorry po, ang title po ng YouTube nilagay sa pangalan ko, Father Francis Vincent Gustilo, SDB, uh, doon nyo po eh, try to go back for this. And then, since saan doon po sa kanilang recording yung uh, indications for website and other way of uh, getting to, to, uh, to connect with them, uh, brothers and sisters, I tell you, it's a wonderful uh, way of you to not only listen to one one topic like this, but what? Why not uh, make it possible also from your end? No. Um, let me invite you for next week. Um, alam niyo po nga by the way, uh, yung program na to naka naka YouTube na po ito since last Wednesday. So kung gusto niyo po yung next and at the end of this Wednesday evening after our Bible study, the download na po, i-upload na pa, pala sa YouTube ang week 13. Ito po ang final segment ng ating one season, the Catholic family, in its uh, relationship with God within the family and in its social transformation. Ito po, ang last segment po is a witnessing of a autistic person. Siya po ah, si Vico Cham is an autistic person and yet, naka-affect siya ng maraming tao around him. Especially autistic persons, children like him. And so, I'd like to uh, ask you to, sana this is a very challenging situation in our society. PWD, persons with disability. And yet, look at this Catholic family of June and Kathy Chab with their elder son, si Carlos, and with their son, Vico. They will be with us together next Monday. So see you po, and I'm sure it will be another wonderful, wonderful segment that happened tonight. Salamat, Benji and Pebbles. Kayo din, ha? Ben, Leo, 
at si si Bidad ano ba first uh, si Bob Bubot okay salamat God bless God bless God bless you God bless you mga kapatid good evening at see you again next week God bless